here from PressStarComic.com. We're at FunSpot11. We're here with the man, the myth, the legend. It's Gary. Nice to meet you, sir. Good to see you again. <laughs> so, when we came up here in January, if you might remember from my first video here, um, I didn't think anything. I thought we were just going to take some videos and stuff. And we came back on our second trip. This guy taps me on the shoulder and he says, are you Nick from PressStarComic.com? And it was the very first time that it was ever recognized from YouTube. And he goes, I'm Gary the manager. How you doing? And he's took us back here and we're actually here in the back room. Not Very few people get to see the inside of here, right? Yeah, we, it's not an area we bring people in commonly, but this is, it's a complete and total mess right now just because of the, the, the flurry of activity that leads up to the tournament that, you know, we're trying to get surprises done for the players to, you know, enhance their experience here as much as possible. And so there's always ends up by the end of the tournament week, there's cut pieces of wire laying on the floor and screws and everything else just from trying to go as fast as possible to get stuff out. In fact, Randy's still in here. He's plugging away, as he always does, 16 to 18 hours a day tournament week, uh, getting mm -hmm. some obscure games out, running for the players. Getting all the machines fixed, making sure the joysticks, we just had some joystick issues. On some well, you're, you're, you know, you're going to run into that because of the age of the games you're dealing with. Everything that's out there, you know, 20, 25 years old, 30 years old, and as we all know, you get older, things get older, they don't work the way they did when they were new. So, you know, you're, you're going to have that, that, that problem. The parts, parts are going to break, it's just inevitable. So when again did you start here at Fun Spot? Personally, I started here, uh, my first day was August 20th, 1981. He's got it. <laughs> and it just it was funny because I was here as a customer and I got to know the Lawton family and that summer some of their college help left a little bit early and they were strapped for employees and Sandra Lawton approached me and she said can you just fill in you know maybe a week beyond Labor Day just so you know we can fill out yeah. the season here and I said yeah sure and at the end of my three week stint I was uh, leaving and Bob said hey when we uh, get going for next summer, I want you to come back. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, yeah, that'll be fun. And I came back the summer of 82, and pretty much been in this full-time ever since. And you worked at the one in Florida? Because there's a couple, there, how many fun spots were there again? There were, uh, there was, in New Hampshire, we had Wolfboro, Concord, Dover, Amherst. We, and of course, the original location here in Weir's Beach. We had uh, another one in South Portland, Maine, and then we had one in Newport Ritchie, Florida. And actually, the one in Florida is still there. Uh, different name, it's yeah. called Stop and Play now, it's on US 19, but that was originally Fun Spot when it opened uh, November 12th of 83. Yeah, because we had some people with the videos like, yeah, it was, I wish it was the Fun Spot near me, because I live in the one near Florida and it ain't the same. No, well see, the thing is, is there's, there's a lot of different places called Fun Spot. Yeah and they're not affiliated with us at all. It's, it's just Fun Zone used, and all the other places. Somebody like, used, you know, has the same name or it's yeah. Fun Spot, yeah. two separate words. But we have no other locations yeah. now other than this one yeah. here. Because it's kind of like in New York with all the famous original Rays, pizza and everything like that. So yeah. there's a million of them, but sure. only one Fun Spot. Yeah. So what made you decide to start the American Classic Arcade Museum? Each week uh, we'd have weekly managers meetings. And at the end of the meetings, Bob would always open up the meeting for general discussion and say, is there anything else anybody wants to bring to the table and talk about? And it was September of 1998. And I actually, I'd always, I couldn't remember the exact time, but I, then I remembered, well, wait, I had, you know, notes. We used to take at all these meetings, and I just thumbed through them until I found it, uh, where I had just made a suggestion that said, well, you know, we have a lot of older games upstairs. And do you have any objection if I take and start moving them all into one particular area and kind of, you know, make like a museum type thing out of it? That, because these games aren't out there anymore. You're not going to go into, I guess if you can even call an arcade anymore, and find, you know, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Galaga's, and, and whatever. So Bob said, yeah, you know, this sounds like a lot of fun. And a lot of people don't realize is that Bob is a is a, a big history buff. And in 1985, he and his son Tim formed the Lake Winnipesaukee Historical Society. 
and the yeah. Historical Society now actually has a museum on the property that abuts us here. Yes, I, you see it when you go off because it's like Winnipesaukee Historical Society, fun spot. <laughs> yeah, and also um, there was a newspaper that was published from, and I'm sure I'm going to get the dates wrong, it was 1888 through about 1912. It was called the Weir's Times. And in 1992, Bob resurrected the Weir's Times and started the newspaper running again and has been running it ever since. And he just, you know, loved the history because he had many of the old original issues from the 1800s of the Weir's Times. And he just thought, you know, it'd be nice to get this going again because it was so historically significant at that time. So it was kind of a natural tie-in that, you know, he thought an arcade museum would be a good idea. So after King of Kong came out, did you notice, like, at not just during the tournament, but just an influx of people coming over the summer? Yeah, there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, that discovered us for the first time through the movie. Uh, other people knew about us before and it's just like, wow, you guys are in a movie. And people come here and they, you know, they want to see the Donkey Kong machine. And play the Donkey And just be in the room and go, wow, you know, I remember this part from the movie and I, you know, I'm in the same spot and I see people taking pictures of each other standing next to the Donkey Kong And they're all machine. doing the pose. <laughs> I haven't seen the pose yet. I've just seen people, they just stand there I know Mark's the machine. did the pose. Mark's done the pose. I'll click it ah. <laughs> He's got it on his site. you got to check it out. Yeah. So yeah, that and also at the same time, there was a film crew here that, that was filming footage that ended up be, being in Chasing Ghosts, mm -hmm. which was the other uh, film that's out. And then March of last year, we had another film crew come in from Harbor House Pictures out of New York, and they were filming uh, Altar of the Unnamed. And we've just been in contact with them again. They're looking to return to film more footage here. We actually had to close the Arcade Museum for six straight days so that they could set up all their lights. They had to change the lighting in the room because you know, I'm not a filmmaker, I don't know. Yeah, they kind of like that orange light. Technically, yeah. If, if, if you're shooting in a certain, you know, K range of light, yeah. doesn't come out correctly on film. So they had to swap that up and they had dolly tracks out there that they were rolling camera dollies through. It was a, it was a fun thing to watch, especially for us that had no idea how mm -hmm. a film was put together. Now, if you ever get any spare time, do you ever just, you know, drop a token in and play any of the games? Spare time. Randy, what's, what's spare time? <laughs> Ready? Yeah. No such thing. No yeah. such thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we have any of that here. I'll have to look in one of the boxes okay. around here, see if we have a box so, of spare time. Okay, then I'll, re I'll, rephrase, I'll rephrase the question. When you worked here in 81, when you had spare time, what was the game that you played the most? I used to like Crazy Climber, uh, Alpine Ski, um, just trying to think. Uh, those were the two big ones I used to play at the time, it was Crazy Climber and Alpine Ski. Of course, at that time, Alpine Ski was like a brand new game we had just got in. So it's, yeah, I just dated myself. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. That's what we <laughs> yeah. do all the time. So it's like, wow, this is really cool. You know? this, so when this, uh, who started with the tournament? Was it Twin Galaxies came to you, or did you guys decide to do it? What had actually happened is in December of 98, we were approached by three people from the New Hampshire Pro video game team. And at that time, I didn't even, I didn't realize myself that there were still video yeah. game teams. I remember it from the early 80s, yeah. you know, when the fad was big and stuff. And it would go was, around. And, and people would play and play. And I, I just had thought that that had gone away. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, Ken, Jen, and Corey came here from the New Hampshire Pro video game team. Actually, Jen is still with us helping yep. out with the tournament. She's the one who checked you in at the uh, check-in. And gave us direction. Thank you, Jen. Yep. So they sat down with me in our restaurant downstairs and said, look, you know, we have a video game team. We're looking for a place to come where we can practice and have other team members come for competitions. And, and I was fascinated by it because it's like, wow, I did not think mm -hmm. people still did this. So at the end of our conversation that we had, as we were leaving, I, I said to Ken, I said, hey, you know, I got a question for you. Do you think anybody would be interested in doing a tournament on, you know, old games? Because yeah. we have so many of them upstairs. And he says, yeah, that, that sounds really neat. You know, I, I like the, cl the classic games. And he says, I think it would be a good idea. I said, yeah, well, let's, let's talk sometime. And he called Walter Day because uh, Ken and the New Hampshire Pro Video Game Team were doing uh, home console tournaments yeah. with Twin Galaxies. And 
So the next thing I knew, Walter called me and he says, hey, I've been talking with uh, Ken Sweet. And he says, you, you guys are interested in doing a classic video game tournament. And I said, yeah, you know, he says, oh, so we, you know, we chatted on the phone about it. And we set it up for, it was the first weekend in May of 99. And that's how the, the ball got rolling. And since then, you know, Fun Spot and the Arcade Museum have expanded it out to a four day event. And we try to mix it up each year and try to make it as challenging as possible for players where I'm sure as you know we don't announce the game titles until oh, yeah. the first day of the tournament and that way what we're trying to do is establish the most level playing field that we can so that no one you know has some, an unfair advantage well, yeah some people have main some yeah. people don't have main so you know I, I don't want to make an announcement ahead of time and somebody goes okay I'm practicing as much as I can so they can come in and already people are at a distinct yeah. disadvantage. So if nobody knows, nobody's going to have the upper hand yeah. when they walk into the competition. They're coming in cold, and I, I just think that we can't come up with any other way that would be more fair to keep you know the competition as level as possible. Does, now, how do you go through that with choosing the games? Does everybody get together and they say, we want to go with this, this, and this? We have, we have a very, very small group of people, two or three people, we get together, we go over all of the the little quirks of games and can't get a game obviously that somebody's going to marathon for yeah. four hours or one that's got a cheat in it or something where you know, oh, on level four you can hide in the lower left hand corner and just shoot all that and, and, and point scab all you want. Yeah. So there's, there's quite a bit that goes into it so that, you know, we're sure that you know, we're not going to get any surprises the first day of the tournament when somebody's standing at a game for 10 hours. Yeah. And then no one else will want to play that game. Well, so no one else would be able to yeah. because one person would monopolize it. Of course. So, we really want to thank you once again for chat, having the time to just take a time and sure. chat with us. And we'll have more here from the tournament. So, thank you, for, thank you very much, Gary, and thank you very much for watching.